Greetings, you are watching episodes. My name is Nastya Devyatova and tonight I'm going to tell you about the following. <music> Journalist Oles Buzana was shot dead in downtown Kyiv. People have gathered in front of the Constitutional Court to influence its decision about the law on lustration. Discussion on the prohibition of Soviet symbols. Is it possible to change historical memory? Ukrainian journalist Oles Buzana was killed this Thursday in Kyiv. He was gunned down by two masked men. This fact has been confirmed by Anton Herashenko, an advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs. Oles Buzana was well known for his pro-Russian position. Earlier in March, he resigned from the post of chief editor of the newspaper Sivodnya, where he worked from January. Buzana argued that he resigned because of the newspaper's censorship. New rules for Kyiv buses. Carriers will now have to buy new buses and announce stops. 67 capital routes will be put up for tender on the 20th of May. All existing transport, including all buses, will be allowed. However, they cannot serve for more than one year and will have to be replaced by new buses. Carriers, in their turn, comment that some routes will be closed and fares will be at least doubled. Dynamo Kyiv failed to win its game with Fiorentina in the first leg of the quarterfinals of the Europe League. One and a half minutes separated Dynamo from a desired victory, as the match ended in one-to-one -one draw, Fiorentina equalizing in time added by the referee. Next week, Dynamo will coach Rebro will have a second try in Italy to make it to the next round in Warsaw. The Constitutional Court of Ukraine has delayed the review of drafting the law on purification of power as a result of Ukrainian deputy Leonid Yemet's appeal. New amendments to this law were submitted to Parliament and are awaiting review. The discussion about the importance and effectiveness of this law continues. Our journalists Irina Huts and Stella Shabliowska tried to find out whether the current draft can become an effective tool. For almost six months, Ukrainian officials should have been reviewed in compliance with the current law on the purification of power. According to the Prime Minister of Ukraine, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, 500 officials have already been removed from their positions and one and a half thousand have resigned on their own accord guided by the current law. The verification procedure for the abuse of authority remains a question marked both to those subject to the law and to experts. This law was an instrument, not perfect, but an instrument. Everything depends on their decision about killing or not killing this law by the constitutional judges. God forbid they will kill it. In that case, it will delay reform for years. The Constitutional Court of Ukraine plans to examine the law referring to possible violation of human rights, which are guaranteed by the Constitution of Ukraine. The right to be chosen, the right to an individual approach in a legal proceedings, the right not to hold responsible for acts which were not an offense at the moment of occurrence, the right to hold responsible after guilt is proven in the court of law. <laughs> The law which is enforced today is absolutely normal and optimal. It provides for the removal from office of those people who even through their inaction supported the Yanukovych regime. Those who consider that this law infringes on some rights are being foolish. People just want to continue working as prosecutors, ministers and so on. According to the former Constitutional Court Judge Mykola Kozubra, both the deputies and the Supreme Court of Ukraine submissions showed interest in concealing or changing the law. However, Mr. Kozubra admits that the current law needs to be reviewed for compliance with the Constitution of Ukraine. We need real reason to dismiss an official. We should have real evidence that certain people taint themselves. An individual approach should be taken. But the law on the purification of power, which is enforced today, doesn't include that. And this contradicts human rights concerns. 
Mr. Kozubra also said the decision to delay review of the law on the purification of power is correct for the time being, until Ukraine receives the Venice Commission's final conclusion and final adjustments can be made. Irina Huts, Stella Shabliovska, specially for episodes. The term of the next review of lustration is unknown. However, it's also unknown whether the meeting will take place or not, because seven judges may withdraw. But at least 12 judges of the Constitutional Court are needed to review the submission. Symbols of the Soviet Union were common in our streets till now. But this situation can change with the new law which prohibits the usage of such symbols in Ukraine. More details from Viktoria Sidorenko and Sasha Feiner. Ukrainian parliament considers a law which can prohibit using Soviet symbols. This step is supposed to be an answer to Russian invasion and erection on society's mood after revolution of dignity, during which Ukrainians destroyed Leninist monuments all around Ukraine. Still, even after these events, it's easy to find Soviet symbols on the streets, buildings and shops. Hammer and sickle, one of the most popular symbols of Soviet Union, decorate the entrance to the oldest Ukrainian university, Kyiv Mohyla Academy. So we ask students, what do they think about this new law? Everything beautiful is art, even Lenin's monuments. I can understand why do we need to destroy them. It's a sculpture's work, it's just art. This symbol should be taken away, but I'm not sure whether this is the most important task for us now. But those who sell Soviet symbols as souvenirs tend not to support the law, as it can influence their business. If we will not sell such souvenirs, our life will not change. Maybe after this law, Ukrainian souvenirs will sell better. They can't change anything with this law. Soviet symbols will be more expensive and will be sold under the table. The most important thing is consumer demand. And what is more, there is nothing bad about these symbols. The debate on the law continues. Viktoria Sudorenko, Sasha Faina, specially for episodes. Comic-Con International will finally take place in Ukraine. Today is the last day of the project's fundraising on Spilna Kost. The festival includes a wide range of pop culture and entertainment elements crossing virtually all genres, including horror, animation, manga, video games, webcomics and fantasy novels. Our journalist Maria Dachkovska spoke to Maria Shaghuri, the main organizer of this festival in Kyiv. Tell me please how you came up with the idea to organize the Comic Con Festival in Kyiv. Well, um, uh, we decided to create a platform for all people who are um, interested in popular cultures, who like films and uh, fantastic themes, for example, like uh, Avengers or uh, Batman, or who are fond of um, uh, different kind of games or comics or whatever. Uh, there was no such platform in Ukraine uh, till this year. Are you satisfied with the amount of money you've got by Spilna Kost? Of course I do. <laughs> I am. Uh, today is the last day of our uh, company and um, we already got 167%. People um, like the project, I think. <laughs> Could you announce some maybe famous names? Uh, will they be in the program of the festival or not? Uh, we're working on it. Uh, if everything is good, uh, some stars from abroad will come to us and we will announce it uh, on our uh, social media side. Are you ready to announce the uh, date when it will be uh, shown? Uh, and uh, it will Turk part, take part in Kyiv and maybe the place. Uh, yes, we are ready to announce uh, the, uh, the date. It will be 6th, 7th of June uh, uh, this year, uh, but we can't, uh, uh, we can't announce the place yet because uh, the documents are not signed at the moment. But we uh, can say that uh, the festival will be held in the center of Kyiv. 
The human body consists of approximately 5 liters of blood. Donor can give from 3 to 400 milliliters at one time. How does it feel to share your blood? We'll learn in the story by Yulia Kochtova and Stella Shabliovska. Become my blood drop. In such a way people are urged to become blood donors. The club of blood donors have existed at the School of Health for the last five years. They organize special donor days. Lesa Kaczynska learned about the event on Facebook. She's a student of a master program who works as a librarian and today the first time she's donating blood. Provide your number, please. There were nine, six, seven, seven. Now it's time for our country when we all have to share. And blood is the least of what we can share with others because it can save someone's life. Earlier I couldn't take part in blood donation because of study, lack of time, the state of my health, and today I finally came. Fear of losing consciousness lies somewhere deep in my soul, but I'm sure everything will be fine. After registration, we test the hemoglobin level, liver condition, and determine the blood group and the rage factor. After that, there is a quick test for hepatitis, syphilis, and other infection diseases. We measure donor blood pressure, ask about their health, what they ate the day before. Over the past decade, the number of donors has decreased by 30%. Even the USA, in a group of 1,000 people, one or nine are blood donors. In Ukraine, this number is 18. This is what we should talk about because blood is always needed. Are you ready? Yes. I have a lot of friends who have repeatedly donated blood and had only positive feedback. They promote this movement. Blood donation can bring others the hope for life. It's at the minimum that we can give to children who are dying, for example. For us, it's not much effort to spend 20 minutes of our lives. We waste three times more in social networks. I'm at work at the moment, just ran out during work time and said that I need to take a book to another building, so I have to hurry back. Julia Kochtova, Stella Shabliovska, specially for episodes. Donor days are held every spring and autumn in the sixth building of the Kyiv Mahila Academy. For the last few years, Ukrainian theater director Serhii Annenberg has organized Pavlev Fest, a festival for people with special needs. But because of the lack of funding, the festival won't take place this year. However, the Budmo Theatre, with its permanent participants, continues its work. My... <laughs> On Thursday, Kyiv cyclists held a bike marathon called Bike to Work. Our journalists find out what made people join this event. The bike, it will be better at always, primarily for one's heels. And I think it's easy to use a bicycle than to be stuck in traffic jams. In general, I ride my bike all year round, despite the rain, snow or heat. Riding a bike is a simple thing. In general, I was curious as to how many people would gather. I want bike passes in Kyiv and therefore supported this action. It's very cool to ride a bike around the city. Because I think it's a good way to get to work. In cars we create a lot of traffic jams, we create crazy traffic and don't get the physical exercises that we need every day, especially those who work in offices, who spend all day sitting in front of the monitors. This morning we got up at half past six and decided that the weather outside was good, so we went. That's all. The main thing is that we support the European idea and healthy lifestyle. That's our position. (laughs) 
when will winter finally let go? Next comes the weather forecast from Yulia Kulik. So, that you won't be surprised, let's look at the upcoming weather forecast for Ukraine. During the week it will be rainy in all of Ukraine. In the west of the country, daily temperature will be fluctuated from 3 to 15 degrees Celsius, at night from 3 to 1. In the north, it will be raining. In the daytime, the temperature will be from 8 to 11, at night it will decrease from 3 to 1 about 0. In the center of Ukraine, it will be raining with thunderstorms. Daytime temperature will be 8 to 11, at night it will be fluctuated from 7 to 1 degrees Celsius. In eastern Ukraine, it will be raining during the week. In the daytime, it will be 10 to 18, at night 8 to 3. In the south of the country, it will be rainy, with thunderstorms in the some areas. The temperature will fluctuate from 11 to 14 degrees. At night, they will range from 8 to 5. In Crimea, it will be raining too. On Saturday, the daily temperature will be plus 9, and throughout the week, it will rise to 20 degrees. At night, temperature will fluctuate from 6 to 1. In the capital of Ukraine, it will rain at times. In the daytime, it will be 8 to 16, at night, 6 to 1 above zero. May your mood always be good and the weather be your friend. That's all for today. Stay tuned and have a nice weekend.